Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Vina Bharat. Let's take a look at the headlines. History is made as Trinidad and Tobago and Grenada sign a new energy agreement. Schools reopen as the Education Minister pleads for parental commitment to children's education and development. CARICOM history was made today in the signing of an agreement that will see the sharing of natural gas resources if deepwater explorations find energy resources in untapped regions in waters between both nations. The signing took place at the Energy Ministry's headquarters located at Tawa Sea. In signing the agreement, both parties expressed the potential it had in strengthening relations between the two CARICOM states. Relations between this country and Grenada have taken a new step in making CARICOM history as a partnership that will see deep water exploration commence. The agreement is said to have been as a result of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas that facilitates the development and partnership of energy resources among CARICOM member states. Energy Minister Kevin Ramnarine says the partnership comes as the four key blocks to be explored lie in waters between the two states. In perusing the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, it speaks to cooperation between CARICOM member states in the, um, towards the development of natural resources that they may, be, that they may share in the Caribbean region. So this, um, what we're doing here actually um, breeds life into the revised Treaty of Chagaramas and, and therefore is very significant to Trinidad and Tobago and to Grenada. Grenada is visiting Finance Minister Nizam Burke Signing on behalf of his administration describes the move as one setting the tone for further CARICOM integration as well as the opening of greater opportunities for both nations. This agreement provides for joint cooperation in determining our hydrocarbon reserves, exploration and exploitation of these reserves for mutual benefit. It also provides for skills and technology transfers, something that will be absolutely necessary for Grenada if we are to partner with Trinidad in this enterprise. The implementation of this agreement will spur the development of our countries and bring benefits to our people in respect of jobs, income and opportunities. Foreign Affairs Minister Winston Dukaran, also on hand for the signing, describes the agreement as an expression of cooperation. We cannot claim that this will bring any immediate results, but clearly it has the potential of so doing in the years to come. It will encourage us to develop the capital flows between our country and within the wider Caribbean. And at the same time, it will allow us to exploit more effectively our natural resources within a framework in which there can be full agreement as to how it operates. Minister Ram Narayan explains that the process will see the two nations working side by side and finding seismic data in an oil region never explored before. He expects that the exploration will result in finds rich in natural gas. We're advised that there is not sufficient seismic data in that area, so this is something that we'll have to jointly go out there and acquire in what they call a multi-client survey, which is where the seismic vessels go out and they shoot the seismic underwater to collect the data. That would be the first step. The agreement that we signed today also makes provision for the establishment of joint working committees between persons from the government of Grenada and persons from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. We already have proven that the area has natural gas and we are producing natural gas from that area within our side of defense. The relation is expected to bring together the sharing of expertise in the energy sector with Grenada. Something Minister Ram Narayan says will engage further talks with Grenada officials and this country's tertiary education minister, Fazal Karim. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Kuva North MP Ramona Ramdial is urging citizens to be grateful for all this country has achieved in the last 50 years since becoming a nation. In looking back at where Trinidad and Tobago has come to where it is today, Minister Ramdial says as a unified people, Trinbagonians stand filled with national pride in celebrating 50 years of independence. The central district of Kuva has been known to produce a number of this country's top citizens. And in recognition of this, 
Residents came out in their numbers to pay tribute to several of them who have shaped and molded their community into what it is today. MP for Coover North and Minister in the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources, Ramona Ramdial, says this was proof of the many achievements we had to be proud of as a nation. We have reached a very long way from 1962 till now. We have a lot of founding fathers, a lot of pioneers. We have a lot to be proud of. Our athletes who did us proud this year at the Olympics. As you know, we had one gold medalist, many silver and bronze medalists. And of course, we had 12 Olympic finalists in this Olympics that just went by. And I know that for the future 2016 and the Olympics at Brazil, we are going to have a greater contingence of athletes doing us proud. So we have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to look forward to. And therefore, as a people, we have a lot to be proud of. 25 people were honored for their role in the development of Kuva. Minister Ramdial says this kind of recognition aids as encouragement to citizens who diligently serve the nation selflessly. We have embarked upon a program where we are going around the constituency trying to develop our people, both our older population and our children. And we have been very successful doing that thus so far. Shigonas Mayor Orlando Nagisa says it's this kind of unity that keeps patriotism alive in Trinidad and Tobago. Our government, the present government, is not political. Our present government has instituted two ministries to look at this coming together, unity in diversity, the Ministry of Multiculturalism and the Ministry of Diversity. Two ministries, actually the first time in the history of this land that we see two ministries actually working hand in hand to bring about a country that will move together as one people, moving, working, studying, worshiping, and doing everything that is necessary, ladies and gentlemen, to show that we have equ equity and equality within the context of Trinidad and Tobago. The celebration featured a local food competition and cultural show. Coover residents were asked to put forward their best dishes, which were sampled by the MP herself. In the end, the night belonged to entertainers who performed to the delight of many gathered for the Independence Day treat. You can use your imagination. You just might make a great invention. A rocket ship that turns into a car. Turn to the movie. Fifteen, celebrating fifteen. Fifteen, celebrating fifteen. Fifteen. Kimberly Ram Callowan, News 4. We'll take a short break and be right back with more on News 4. Never leave items like MP3 players, portable DVD players, laptops and briefcases on view inside your vehicle. It is an open invitation for a thief. Don't leave them on show. If you cannot take them with you, place them in the trunk of your car. Remember, crime prevention is everyone's business. A message from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Parents are being urged to commit to their children's education and personal development. The plea is being made by Education Minister Dr. The Honorable Tim Gopi Singh, who warns that society is in danger of losing even more young persons to crime and violence. The message comes as almost 250,000 students in early childhood, primary and secondary schools throughout the nation start the new academic school year. To parents to make a commitment to be engaged in all their children's activities, particularly in their education. The Minister of Education cautions that the future depends on it. Dr. Gopi Singh says society is suffering from a crisis in parenting at this time and adds that it is critical that parents build stronger bonds and take a keen interest in their children's lives, problems and emotions. He advises that children should be well supervised at all times and subjected to strong boundaries and discipline. Dr. Gopi Singh is also highlighting the issue of teacher absenteeism while underscoring the crucial role that teachers play in grooming the future leaders. 
He says many children come from dysfunctional backgrounds, making the tasks of teachers more challenging. The minister is advising teachers to teach with inspiration, love, care and dedication. Students are also being urged to be mindful that they are now benefiting from opportunities that no other generation in this country ever had. He says children have a duty to their parents, teachers, taxpayers and country to excel at their schoolwork, be disciplined and diligent with the aim of one day serving the nation as dedicated, hardworking citizens. And meanwhile, parents are today heeding to the call of the Education Minister, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, to play a more active role in their children's education. Minister Gopi Singh says parenting is in a state of crisis and is urging parents to play their role in the proper upbringing of their children. GISL TV4 met with some parents who say they are in full support of the minister's statement. The eager parents were today waiting to greet their children after their first day of school for the new academic year. I believe it's a good statement because the reason why there are a lot of crime is because parents are not taking a, a main role in their children's lives and if they are proper role models in society, especially you are a parent, you have to be one and you have to show your, your child that and you have to give them the guidance in life and if you do that, I don't believe that they will have so much crime in society. It is true, parents should, you know, take a more interest in role in their kids. It's a fact and if they do that, their children will succeed and they will achieve what they want. I believe personally the parents will play a greater role because they are the role models for the kids and the kids can look up to the parents and follow in their footsteps. The parents will, be, will get a closer relationship with the kids now. You understand? I think that's, 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 that's justifiable. That's very justifiable. Parents always have the, the role to play in, their, in behalf of their children. They are the ones that teach their children. They are the ones who are supposed to be the first teachers. So I agree. I agree with that. In the midst of preparation for the opening of the new school term, the children in the Coover North constituency were able to take a break from cleaning their shoes and packing their book bags. As MP for the area, the Honorable Ramona Randiel provided a welcome getaway for them. Oh, how I wish I were a child again. This was the thought of some parents in the Coover North constituency as their children were treated to a movie night by the Member of Parliament for the area, the Honorable Ramona Ramdial. Ms. Ramdial, who is also the Minister in the Ministry of the Environment and Water Resources, says the celebration, which is in its second year, is twofold. She reveals that the event is not only in celebration of our Golden Jubilee, but also to send the children off to school in a great frame of mind. The children were treated to performances by Winsy and Cuffy and local children's group JJ and Friends. Meanwhile, also speaking at another event in a constituency, Ms. Ramdial is noting the need for young people to exhibit a greater sense of patriotism. This call she made at an Independence Day celebration held at the Carpetchimer Recreation Ground. Minister Ramdial says young people should realize that they are first Trinbagonians before they are anything else. She adds that since Trinidad and Tobago has a lot to be proud of as an independent nation, the youth in this country should develop a strong sense of national pride and loyalty to TNT. One group of children eager to show off their national pride was JJ and Friends, whose patriotic performance at the movie night hosted by Ms. Ramdial earned them rave reviews. For those who missed out on their performance, here's a piece of what you missed. Gregory McBurney, News 4. We'll be right back with sports news after the break. Adults aren't the only ones who beat up on kids. Sometimes kids beat up on kids. Every child has the right to be protected from violence, abuse and neglect. Because I shouldn't be afraid to go to school or play with my friends. Because no child should be hurt by adults or by other children. Because safety is my right. Stop the bullying.
Trinidad and Tobago's hunt for medals at the London 2012 Paralympics competition continues after shot putter Ronald Carlos Green was unable to medal in his event. Competing in the men's shot put, Green managed to throw a personal best of 10.87 meters. And although it was his personal best, it still wasn't good enough for a place on the podium. The winner, Andrei Holivet of Ukraine, threw a European record of 16.25 meters to take the top spot. Green's 10.87 earned him 11th place overall in the field. Trinidad and Tobago's only other competitor at the Paralympics, swimmer Chantal Ince, hits the pool on Tuesday in the women's 400 meters freestyle competition. Our hopes of a medal at these games now lie with the 17-year-old as she takes on her final event of the London 2012 Paralympics. Moving to football, the Blink B Mobile National Super League moved into its knockout competition following the end of the first round of league action. Five games were contested this weekend with some impressive results. Wayne Cunningham has the rundown. The four teams at the top of the point standings following the first round of league action were given buys as a knockout competition in the Blink B Mobile National Super League got underway on Sunday. Wasa, Joe Public, Westside Superstars and Stokely Vale were the 14 teams who got an extra week to prepare before making their appearances at the quarterfinal stage of the competition. The most enticing clash on the fixture was expected to be the game featuring Eastern rivals Real Maracas and FC Santa Rosa. But it turned out to be a mismatch, with Santa Rosa registering an emphatic 4-0 win courtesy a double from the talented Dwayne Mockett and one each from Ion Allen and Danilo Silva. Central Outfit Eagles United will also be moving on to the next round following their 2-0 victory over Southerners Separia Spurs. The veteran midfielder Bernard McCall scoring both goals just three minutes apart in the 71st and 74th minutes. The other Southern representative in the contest, Club Sando, was also sent packing early despite going ahead in their match versus the defence force. A 20-minute strike from their veteran, Dexter Franklin, had them in charge of the first half. But second-half goals from Levi Series and Kareem Charles advanced the military men to the quarterfinals with a 2-1 win. Over in Tobago, home team 1976 SC Phoenix trunks Eastern County's representative Beach United 5-1 with goals from Darren Mitchell, Dario Holmes, Dominic Kerr, Shelton Williams and Andel Noré. Kellen Walcott got the lone item for Beach. The quarterfinal round is now set with one match to be contested on Saturday. An all Tobago encounter between Stokely Vale and 1976 FC Phoenix at the Plymouth Recreation Ground. Then on Sunday, an all Eastern clash will be on show at the Wasa Ground in St. Joseph between the home team and FC Santa Rosa. The other East team in the round of eight is Joe Public FC. They will be at home in the Marvin Lee Stadium when they face the defense force of the Northern Association. While at the St. Anthony's College ground in West Moorings, the other North team, West Side Superstars, will come up against Central Crew, Eagles United. All games begin at 4 p.m. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. We'll take a break and be right back with more news here on TV4. Traditional practice of processions reminds us that all God's people are on pilgrimage through this life. One such procession took place at the Feast of Santa Rosa. The procession began early in the morning to meet the Carib community at the Santa Rosa Catholic Church. The Santa Rosa Church is a landmark in Arima, 
which lies in the foothills of Trinidad's northern range. Indigenous people and residents came out in their numbers to celebrate the 26th anniversary of the Feast of Santa Rosa. It was established for the Amerindians living in Takarigua and Aruca. These indigenous people took the annual feast of the saint celebrated in the church and developed a festival dedicated to St. Rose or Santa Rosa. Somehow, there is a kind of reverberating from Plymouth to Cedras, from Port of Spain to Matlot, from Tabaki to Arima, a reverberation that says, God bless this land. The festival spans the entire month and culminates on the feast day celebrated every year, on the last Sunday of August. This festival is one of the most important ones since it has served to keep the indigenous people together and rallying around the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. Knowing and retelling our story has been the focus of our attention. It is a story of struggle and hardship. It is a story repeated over and over. And this day we have learned to appreciate that nationhood never comes easy. It is arrived only after much struggle, much fight, much yearning, and profound desire. It begins with a mass at the Santa Rosa Church in Arima, followed by a procession through the streets of the Barra. The Santa Rosa Carb Festival takes place in August, in the weekly leading up to Independence Day, and is intended to pay tribute to the first peoples of the New World and to expose their culture to the nation. The ceremonies include the crowning of the Carb Queen, an elder of their community, performs the role of focusing their heritage and traditions, a church procession and performance of some of their traditional and ritual activities, smoke ceremonies and prayer, as well as the opportunity to see the preparation of and purchase cassava bread. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Finally, we take a look at our golden anniversary celebrations across the country and what the Ministry of Finance had in store as its 50th Independence Cultural Show kicked off. I want a feeling. That is something good. You didn't eat lunch before you come. How you feeling? It's independence. How you feeling good? And what a bumper year. We have gold medal, bronze medal. You understand what I said? Nice thing happened to we to remind we that we best. Every culture is unique, but Trinidad is doubly special because of the number of cultural traditions that have been preserved and cross-pollinated by the generations of migrants from all over the world. This makes Trinidad constantly abuzz with artistic and cultural activity. This was evident as employees of the Ministry of Finance and Economy were treated to an action-packed show, highlighting the vast cultures of Trinidad and Tobago. The 50th Independence event at the Finance Ministry was a treat for all. Excitement and fun, palpable on their faces, as they lapped up performances from the Chinese and Culture Studies Society. This local dance group showed its vibrancy and creativity as they performed the limbo. Hey, hey, papa. Hey, papa. Hey, papa. 
Trinidad's most popular music from the East Indian culture was also part of the show. And then, an increasingly diverse music duo played out with Super Jigger TC and Charles Marshall at the end of the show. Joseph Lopez, News 4. And that's all for our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Vuna Barra, thanking you so much for joining us.